Welcome everyone to Vested Interest. This is Shane. And before we get into the video, I would like to take a moment to thank everyone who has taken the time to watch, comment, and like the videos. And a special thanks to those of you who have subscribed to the channel. I really do appreciate it. For those of you who may be stopping by for the first time on this channel, it's not rocket science. In my opinion, the best way to do anything, keep it as simple as possible. It really boils down to consistently investing, buying dividend growth stocks and growing companies with positive cash flow that covers the dividend and companies with a high return on their invested capital. I utilize both a dollar cost average approach, consistently investing into the stocks within the portfolio on a weekly basis. Uh, whenever I get paid, I also may dump a little extra funds in if I have some extra cash. I cover all my investments in this portfolio on this channel. I do not have a paid Patreon account, nor do I ever, ever intend to have one. We all have enough to pay for, so it's free to see what I'm investing in every week. But if you'd like to help out the channel, dropping a comment, liking the videos, and most importantly, subscribing to the channel and hit that notification bell as well so you're notified whenever we release any new content. If you're looking to start your own fund, uh, your own uh, dividend investing journey, I do have a Webull link down below. If you want to use that, you can go ahead and uh, use that link and you'll get some stocks. I'll get some stocks. You don't have to use it, but I do recommend uh, Webull is another service that I use. I use my main account on this channel. Uh, on my Ally account is the one that I review. Now, again, I would receive some free stocks. You would get some free stocks. You don't have to use that. No pressure there. I do not cover my Webull activity on this channel. It's more speculative in nature with much higher risk in the stocks that, I don't, uh, that don't usually pay dividends. Now, in today's video, we are going to be looking at four stocks to potentially buy in October. I will say right off the bat, I am looking to continue to add to uh, some of these positions. Three of them are in my portfolio currently. Intel was one I sold out of a little while back, but looking to add it back into the portfolio. Now let's look at these four. So we'll start off with Whirlpool. Whirlpool uh, was on last month's list. It, list. it remains on this month's list as well. When it closed out last week, the last day of September, at $134.81, ticker WHR. It is in the consumer discretionary sector. A low 52-week range of $134.68. So you can see it is sitting right at that low, right? Just a few pennies off there. Uh, off the low there. So right at the 52 week low, this is where we like to grab them. I wouldn't even mind it if it busted through and set an all new 52 week low, we'd continue to buy. As market cap of 7.348 billion, a beta of 1.56, so much more volatile than the overall market. You can clearly see that. And this being in the consumer discretionary sector with high inflation, a lot of times people put off purchases into stuff like this. So it might be part of the reason why you're seeing this downturn. It does have a P.E. ratio of 11.83. That's pretty low. And earnings per share of 11.40. That's really good. Earnings, next earnings date, October 20th. So it will be the 20th of this month. It has a forward dividend of $7 paid out annually. Or I'm sorry, paid out. That's what you would get for the for the year. It does pay out quarterly, right? And its last dividend payout was $1.75. So it pays out $1.75 quarterly. Right, which where where the seven dollars comes from. Very nice dividend yield of four point nine seven percent. X dividend date, the last one was August twenty fifth, and a one year target estimate from Yahoo Finance of one hundred eighty one dollars and forty cents. Again, this is one I started a position in last month. I'm up to about twelve shares currently. I do want to continue to build out this position, so this is one that I will be buying throughout uh, this next month. Have been buying uh, for the last month, and will continue to do so. Again, this is another one. I added this section down here to the bottom so you can see it's a quarterly payer, as we said, paid out $1.75 last time. So that's probably about what it's going to pay out next. I don't think they've announced a dividend raise, so it should pay out $1.75 for the next. Uh, so for each year you'd get, you'd get $1.75. Payout ratio is a very nice payout ratio. Really like anything under a 75% payout ratio. Uh, you want to make sure, and, and what that is saying basically is that the only 55% of their free cash flow goes to the dividend. So they still have about 45% of their free cash flow to play with. They can reinvest into the business. Uh, you know, so that's good. You, you don't want a high payout ratio. Then, then it starts to worry whether or not the company can, uh, can cover the dividend. Again, me personally, um, <coughs> excuse me, unless it's a REIT or a limited partnership or something like that, I'm looking for 75% or lower really. Uh, or maybe a company like Coca-Cola, which just has slow growth, so it might pay out a higher 80 
you know, 85% and they're just a slow growing company. They're not reinvesting a lot back into the company, right? The, uh, but this is very nice. Dividend growth, 24.57%. So that tells me this is not only a nice dividend yield, but a fast growing. Uh, they increased their dividend CAGR, right? 245 or 25.47% is very nice dividend growth. So we like to see that. So a high dividend plus high dividend growth, very nice combination. Next one on our list I want to add back in is Intel, right? It continued to pull back. I sold this in the, I think around $38 per share, right? It has continued to pull back. This is kind of what I expected. Uh, and again, 52 week range, right at the 52 week low, 2574. Can't get much closer to it there. Again, one that might end up, it looks like it was up in the after hours, but it looks like another one that's testing that low and might end up go breaking through that low. We wouldn't mind it. Market cap of 105.812 billion. Remember, this is a chip company here, ticker INTC, uh, 0.65, so less volatile than the overall market. Not not as volatile as Whirlpool we saw there. Very very low PE, 5.53. Earnings per share, four dollars and sixty six cents. Next earnings report is on 19th through the 24th, somewhere in there. Uh, forward dividend is one dollar and forty six cents. That's what you get for the year. It is another quarterly payer. It's a 5.31% uh, dividend yield, so a little higher than we saw on the previous slide in Whirlpool. So a higher dividend yield, but it is growing slower, 5.02%, but it also has a lower payout ratio. So it is only paying out 30.40% of its free cash flow uh, in dividends. That means it has 70% to invest back in the building, into the business, pay down debt, whatever they want to do with it. And the dividend amount is 36, you know, 0 0.5, 36 and a half a penny there. Uh, so 36 cents ultimately per share, All right? So however many shares you get, you'd get that 36 cents quarterly. And that equals the dollar 40 cents, 46 over the year. All right, that's number two, Intel. Next up, this is a position I already have. I do not have very many shares here. I think I have one whole share of Union Pacific and some uh, change there from reinvested dividends. But this is one I really want to build out. We're talking about Union Pacific, ticker UNP. This is out of the industrial sector. Close of business on Friday was $194.82. 52 week range, $194.73 low. So another one right against the 52 week low. I hope you guys are understanding what I'm doing here, right? I'm looking for things when they hit their 52 week low, that's when I wanna start looking at them. You know, if it busts down through here, I'm fine with that. Uh, this would set me up for that's the, the most I'm gonna pay, right? So if it goes down, I'm dollar cost and averaging down, but it's already at the 52 week low, so it's not gonna go down uh, very much and it may actually have some upside to 278, right? Uh, market cap of 121.661 billion. This is a railroad here, a beta of 1.14, so a little more volatile than the overall market. It does have a PE, a little higher PE ratio here, 18.16. Uh, e earnings per share, 10.73. Uh, next earnings date is October 20th. Forward dividend is $5.20. That's what you'd get on the year. It does pay out quarterly. And here's another one down here, $1.30 quarterly. So however many shares you'd get, $1.30 quarterly, but that would be $5.20 on the year. And it has a lower dividend yield here, 2.5. The other we saw were right around and a little above 5%. This one's at 2.55%, which is a little higher than the overall market. But another one with a very nice dividend growth rate here, 21.57% and a low payout ratio, 44%. So again, that means roughly 60%, 56% of uh, their, their free cash flow can go back into paying down debt, uh, to holding, to pay out future dividends, uh, you know, to give bonuses, whatever they're doing with it uh, there or reinvest in the business. This is a capital intensive business. So there's a lot of maintenance that goes on with this, right? So they can use that 56% towards maintenance. But another one, like I said, high dividend growth, really like the high dividend growth, even though it's a low dividend yield with that high dividend growth, it shouldn't be long before we're up in the three, four percent range. So we really like that. So Union Pacific is another one I want to focus on this month. And the last one on our list, Procter and Gamble, the behemoth, very large company here. Uh, a lot of the stuff, if you opened up your uh, medicine cabinet, you'd probably see Procter and Gamble products, shampoos, soaps, I mean, you name it, they're just a big, big behemoth. This is a consumer staple here. 
Procter & Gamble, ticker PG, closed out the business on Friday at 126.25%, you know, another one that's still down. 52-week range, again, I don't know if you're noticing anything here, 52-week uh, low, $126.21, we're at 126.25, right? So another one that might be knocking on the door to set an all-new 52-week low, and we will continue to dollar cost average as it drops. Market cap, very big, $301 billion. You know, 1.169 billion, so very large company. Beta of 0.34, the least volatile company here overall. Does pay out quarterly. EPS is 5.81. Earnings date October 19th, and here is the $3.65 paid on the year. Like I said, paid out quarterly, 91 cents per share paid out quarterly. Right? Has a 2.69% dividend yield. A little higher than what we saw with Union Pacific, but not super high. But not, you know. Not not low either, higher than the overall market, knocking on that 3%. And if, if we're able to get a little cheaper, obviously, it would be closer to 3%. But I'm comfortable with a 2.69% dividend yield for a company like this, especially with low volatility. I don't mind that. It does have a decent dividend growth rate of 7.35%. Payout ratio is a little higher than the others, 58. I think this was the highest patient payout ratio, 58.70, but not even close to our 75%. So they still have some runway to increase this dividend over time as we go forward. So those are the four companies that I am looking to add uh, stocks to this month. Continue to build out these four. I don't know how I'll break it out. I might add a little bit more to the faster growers, uh, Whirlpool and Intel, uh, or Whirlpool and uh, Union Pacific, add a little more to those two, and then nibble into Procter & Gamble and Intel, though Intel with a very high yield, I might, maybe I'll add to the three, uh, the two higher yielders, real fast grower, and the lowering yield, Union Pacific, and then maybe this one I'll just nibble on. I'm not sure how I'm gonna break it out, but I will divvy up my funds between these four, and then if I see other, positions in the portfolio, existing positions. Intel will be the only new position I add this month. I'm not looking to add a lot right now. I'm looking to continue to build out. So uh, primarily I'll focus on building out these four and adding the Intel position. So that's where I stand. And that will wrap up this video. This is actually a sunrise from uh, this morning, uh, Friday. So I hope you guys had a great week. Uh, man, this year is really flying by. I can't believe it's already October. So those are the four for October. Let me know what uh, positions you're looking at for October. As always, appreciate you stopping by. I hope if you haven't done so already, don't forget to show me some love. Hit that thumbs up, ring the notification bell. Most importantly, subscribe to the channel and hit that uh, uh, and drop a comment down below and let me know what you think of the video. I do personally read and respond to the comments. I'm always interested to read your questions and or opinions. Suggestions for future topics or constructive criticism. Uh, really appreciate you stopping by, guys. I'm a little flustered today. I just got back from a, a funeral. I think I mentioned that on another video. My wife's uh, grandmother died. It's a pretty rough one today, man. Like, I, you don't get choked up too often, but funerals are not uh, not one that I really, really am fond of. And this first one I had with my kids, so pretty rough day overall. But really appreciate you stopping by again hope you had a great week and uh, hope this year has been pretty good for you even though we have this higher inflation and, and a pretty rocky stock market right now hopefully you are enjoying the sales looking for value where you can continue to dollar cost average don't get discouraged i know it can be discouraging to see your portfolio in the red to be honest with you my portfolio is down 12 percent right now uh, but the dividends the yield keeps going up and the dividend snowball keeps growing and right now I'm getting a lot more bang for my buck, right? I'm giving a, getting a lot more dividend returns and my annual dividend returns are growing uh, a lot faster with the uh, stocks being cheaper. So look on the bright side. Don't be afraid of a sale. Like I said, it seems like the market is the only place people will go into the market uh, and be afraid when the stocks that they really like are cheaper. You don't go into the grocery store and get mad when your groceries are cheaper. So you shouldn't do that in the stock market. Just be glad that you're able to get higher yield and more bang for your buck with these sales. Just make sure you're into a good quality companies that are growing with positive free cash flow that can cover the dividend. And with that, enough rambling. This is Shane signing off, wishing peace and prosperity to you and yours. And remember, financial security comes to those who take a vested interest. Hey, we'll see you in the next one. I hope, again, hope you had a great week.
I'm not a financial advisor. Nothing in this presentation should be considered financial advice. I'm only sharing my opinion and investing journey for educational and entertainment purposes. Investing involves risk again. There's money. You should never invest any amount you're not comfortable losing. Always do your own research. Invest based on your situation, circumstances, and select criteria or seek the advice counsel of a certified financial advisor.